for the message this morning, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for your mercy, for your love, for your peace. We thank you that no matter what situation we find ourselves in, we are never alone. You are there with us. So I pray that you will speak to each one of our hearts today with this message about prayer. Prayer is talking to God. I pray that we will understand the importance of developing our relationship with you, Lord, through prayer. So may you receive the honor and glory through this message today. I ask in Jesus' name. The message today is entitled, Why Not Now? Why Not Now? We live in a society where we expect instant results. We see this even in food. We have instant noodles, instant rice, instant cereal. Everything is for convenience, and most of what we have is for right away. So we live in a society that focuses on what can be achieved right at the moment, what can be achieved instantly. So we're in a society that doesn't put any focus on patience. We even have become accustomed to instant results in prayer. What happens when you pray and you don't get an answer right away? Do you get discouraged? Do you stop praying? Because sometimes we put a time limit on God. Sometimes we expect God to answer right away. And if He doesn't, we get discouraged. Yet, in Scripture, we are called to patiently wait upon the Lord. In Psalm 27 and verse 14, it says, Wait patiently for the Lord, be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. So that's very hard, isn't it? When we expect things to happen right away, it's hard to wait. It's hard to be patient. Waiting in the Lord is something that God can do. It's about holding on tight. Holding with expectation and trust. Knowing that our Lord is not making us wait just to see how long we can take it. There are times when God will delay His answer. And we will at times wonder why He seems so reluctant to intervene in our affairs and so reluctant to answer our prayers. Psalm 69 and verse 3 it says, I am worn out calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail looking for my God. So even the psalmist went through times of frustration. But knowing the Lord, we trust that He will come at the perfect moment. Not a second too soon or a second too late. Waiting in the Lord requires and is involved with two key elements. A complete dependence on God and a willingness to allow Him to decide the terms, including the timing of His plan in our life. Trusting God with the timing of events is one of the hardest things to do. One person once said, let go and let God. It's hard to let go. It's hard to let God work in our lives. Trusting God with the timing of events is one of the hardest things. There's a, a prayer that's a little bit humorous. It says, Lord, I need patience, and I need it right now. And that's not far removed from the truth of how we often approach matters of spiritual growth and matters of God's will. We want it now. To wait in the Lord produces character in the life of the Christian. In that it involves patience. Waiting involves the passage of time, which in itself is a gift of God. 
Prayer is, as E. Stanley Jones, in his book, Liberating Ministry from the Success Syndrome, said, prayer is surrender. Surrender to the will of God and cooperation with the will of God. If I throw out a boat hook from the boat and catch hold of the shore and pull, do I pull the shore to me? Or do I pull myself to the shore? Prayer is not pulling God to my will, but the aligning of my will to the will of God. Why not the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5, 22 and 23 is patience. So one of the fruit of the Spirit, one of the characteristics of Jesus is patience. Are we patient? When we pray, if the response doesn't come quickly, or if the response does not come at all. Three things we need to look at in regards to prayer, if we don't get the answer right away. Number one, there may be no answer. Do you realize that sometimes when we pray, we might get an answer that's no even though we expect the answer to be yes. Sometimes we don't realize that the answer we expect may not be good for us. And God knows the whole situation. And he may not answer particular prayer because what we're praying, if he answered yes, might bring us harm. In 2 Corinthians 12, in verses 1 to 10, we see the example of the Apostle Paul. And it says as follows, Although there is nothing to be gained, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Here Paul is speaking of himself. 14 years before, he had seen things that no other man had seen. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man, referring to himself, whether in the body or apart from the body, was caught up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. Paul experienced things that no living man had experienced. No living man at that time on the earth. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself except about my weaknesses. Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because of these great revelations. Therefore, uses the word, therefore, because of what Paul had experienced, in order to keep me from becoming conceited. What does conceit, what's conceit? When someone's conceited, what are they? Selfish. Selfish? Proud. They're proud. When someone's conceited, they're proud. So it says, Paul said, in order to keep him from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. That's something hard to say. You know, we do not delight in things like that when they happen to us. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul had this thorn in the flesh. Some have written that this may be an, an eye condition, because in the book of Revelation he talks about difficulty in seeing, and he's a letter written in large, large letters. So some have said this may have been an excruciating, a painful eye condition. So Paul had this physical problem. And he didn't just go to 
God once or twice, three times, he went and he asked for this affliction, this thorn in the flesh, to be taken away. So that tells me how bad it was. Paul was a tough guy. Paul was a tough man. And not once or twice, but three times, he asked for it to be taken away. He said that it was a matter or a means of spiritual discipline to keep him humble because of what he had seen that no other living man had seen. To keep him humble and not for him to fall into pride. Sometimes God does not heal. God does not take us out of difficult circumstances for a reason that we do not see at the time, but that we will see at some other future point as to why that particular prayer was not answered. In Hebrews 12 and verse 11 it says, For the moment all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So it's saying that difficult circumstances that we go through are a time of training, a time of spiritual growth. A sword is made strong by being put in the fire, and the impurities are burnt off. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17, for this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. What we go through now is preparing us for the time that we will be with Jesus in heaven. Amen? It's difficult now. It's painful now. And we, like Paul, at different times say to God, take it away. I don't understand this. I want to be blessed every day. I don't want to go through difficulties. I don't want to go through trials. I want blessings, 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 as some churches teach. Every day is supposed to be a blessing where you're not going through difficulties and God is going to bless you every day and you don't have to go through any pain or problems. Well, here I see from the example of Paul that we're not promised that. That there will be times we will go through difficult situations and God will not take us out of those situations for a reason. As in the example of Paul. Joni Erickson, one day when she was a teenager, went swimming. And she dived into the end of the pool that was the shallow end rather than the deep end and she broke her neck. She lost all feeling in her hands, in her arms, in her legs, she became a quadriplegic. She couldn't walk, she couldn't move. Now there were many people who said, oh, this must have happened because you have sin in your life. Or God did not heal you because you don't have enough faith. So they put blame on her for not being healed. God did not heal her. But over the last few decades, she has had a powerful ministry from her wheelchair and through books and online to millions of people because of the power and the presence of God in her life, despite the fact that she was not physically healed. And many people said, well, why didn't God answer your prayer? Because God had a greater purpose in her life. How many of those same people would be listening to her if she was walking around like we are and had full use of her arms like we do? Very few. But millions would witness the fact that through her afflictions, she still glorifies and praises God. Amen? God does not always answer our prayers for a reason that one day we shall see. Number two, sometimes when we pray, our prayers can be delayed in the answer that comes because we are involved in a spiritual war. 
we have spiritual opposition. Daniel was a man of faith. Daniel was a man of prayer in the Old Testament. Daniel was a man who fasted and prayed. Nothing wrong in his life. He was in a right relationship with God. There was a time in Daniel 10 where Daniel was concerned for the conditions of his people. And he fasted <coughs> and he prayed for three weeks. Not three days, three weeks. Now, wouldn't you get discouraged if after the first few days and no answer came? Or after the first week? Or after the second week? Wouldn't you get discouraged and say, where's my answer to prayer? I'm coming before the throne of grace in prayer and fasting and I don't see an answer. We'd very easily get discouraged. And after three weeks of prayer and fasting, he had a vision from God. Daniel 10, verses 10 to 14. Then he continued, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come in response to them. Since the first day that Daniel started praying, his words were heard. The angel said, I come in response to them. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief priests, the archangel, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. What is happening here? Daniel, a man of God, who came before God in prayer and fasting to seek the will of God, since the first day that he prayed, his prayer was heard. So there was nothing wrong with Daniel, correct? There was nothing wrong with Daniel's relationship with God. There was nothing wrong with his prayer. However, we are involved in a spiritual war. And the angel that was sent was delayed by a powerful demonic force he was delayed in coming to Daniel and speaking in a vision to Daniel and providing the answer to Daniel's prayer direct. He was delayed. And it said a more powerful angel, Michael, one of the archangels, had to come in order for this other angel to continue to Daniel to provide the message in answer to the prayer that Daniel prayed. Ephesians 6 and verse 12, it says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers in high places. And I can relate to what Daniel went through in a small way. I told you two years ago when I was in Malawi in Central Africa, I took pictures of a tree that was dedicated to the worship of spirits. And I took the pictures of that tree and, and other things that were done that day, both I and the founder of the school we support. And neither one of us could post pictures of, the, of that tree. We posted pictures of everything else. And I was persistent, and I was praying for an hour and a half that those pictures would post on Facebook. I didn't give up. Because I, I said to myself, something is not right here. Why would every picture post except pictures of that tree? So I kept praying. Now God didn't answer right away within five minutes of praying. 
But an hour and a half later, that, those pictures of that tree posted. And then I made a, a comment that I believe that was a spirit tree, and then the, the electrical outlet on my side of the house connected me to the internet blue. And that confirmed that this was spiritual warfare. So the answer to my prayer was delayed by an hour and a half. The answer to Daniel's prayer was delayed for three weeks. Because we are involved in a battle. Prayer is a weapon. Did you know that? We are praying to God. We are talking to God in prayer. Through prayer, we are empowered. Through prayer, we are built up. Through prayer, God responds to the faith of his people and moves and works in changing events and changing lives. So as we come before God in prayer, we should expect opposition. We should expect that sometimes our prayers may not be answered right away for a reason, but that means we should keep praying and not give up. We should be patient and wait upon the Lord. The prayer was answered. Daniel didn't give up praying. The answer came. But what is important is from the first day he started praying, God heard his prayer. God hears our prayer. As soon as we utter our prayers, God hears our prayers. So number one, as we look at, sometimes our prayers are not answered. So sometimes we pray not as we ought. Sometimes we don't know what is good for us. Amen? True? We only know half the picture. Sometimes we come to God and say, Lord, I want this. <laughs> and it's not in his will for us to have that. Because sometimes if he granted that prayer request and we got what we wanted, it would turn us. It would be damaging to us. It says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, we're to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean on unto our own understanding. In all our ways we're to acknowledge him and he will provide us direction and guidance in our life. When we pray to God, we pray with trust. Knowing that God knows what's best for us. So, there are sometimes our prayers will not be answered. There are sometimes our prayers can be delayed because of spiritual opposition. And there are sometimes in our prayers that the prayer will not be answered because God has something better for us. I.e. the prayer will be answered but not the particular prayer that we pray. Romans 8, 26, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Pastor said, one day he went to a grocery store. He looked around for a parking spot, and there it was. So he was happy. As he was getting ready to enter the parking spot, an old woman came along in an SUV and was able to take his parking spot parking spot before he was. This pastor was saying he was angry. He couldn't believe she took his parking spot. So after that spot had been taken, he went around to see if there was another empty parking spot. And he said, Behold, I found a better spot than the one I lost. A spot closer to the entrance of the grocery store. This might have seemed like a meaningless point of story to some people, but God showed me something after I parked. I was angry. I was disappointed because it took me a while to park my car. However, when finally I did park, I found something better. So sometimes when God does not answer our prayer, it's for our own good because he has something better for us. Amen? But we get so frustrated, we get so angry, we 
because we want it now in the way we expect. And sometimes we whine at God like a little child. I want it now. But God knows what's best for us. And as a father who loves us, he knows what is best for us. Amen? Sometimes God has something better in store for us. But we have to be patient until the time is right. Ephesians 3.20, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. God can do more than we ask or imagine. God sees the whole situation. He can provide for our needs. Sometimes God desires to give us more than what we've been praying for. 1 Kings 3.13 I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there will not be any among the kings like you all your days. Sometimes God can bless us even more than what we ask. Amen? Sometimes God can surprise us. God can close a door of employment that we expected to go through, and we can get all upset. And then later on, another door of employment will open up that we couldn't have taken if we had taken the first door. And God closed the first door so that we would be available to get an even better job that opened up. And yet we were frustrated and angry the first time around. But, but God, I, I prayed, well, why didn't this become available? Because God had something better. But often we're not patient to wait, enough to wait on Him. God knows what's best. So there are times when the answer is no. God knows what's best. So there are times our prayer is answered, but not in the way we expect. We are involved in a spiritual battle. And sometimes there's a delay in the answer coming because of the spiritual battle that we are involved in. We should avoid the temptation of saying to God, why not now? I want it now. I want this particular answer to this particular prayer, and I want it now. So often we've become very impatient. I hope this has been of help to you on prayer. Because a lot of times people can become very upset when we, they don't get what they want in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your provision for us. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that as we trust completely in you, we know that you want what is best for us as we faithfully follow you. So sometimes, there will not be an answer to prayer. But we know that there's a reason. Sometimes the prayer will be delayed. But we know there is a reason. Because you have something better for us. Or because there is opposition to the prayer that we have prayed. Lord, you've raised us up to be a praying people. How can we be expected to know more of you unless we pray? Unless we develop our relationship with you through prayer? The Lord raise us up to be that humble praying people that you called us to be. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. So I never know why God lays a particular message on my heart. The message today is on prayer. Are you a praying people? Do you have a desire to pray to Him? Have you been frustrated at different times when your prayers have not been answered in the way that you expect? Because sometimes that can be a lack of faith. Sometimes that can be us saying to God, I know what's best. You don't. True? Sometimes we can, we can have that attitude for God. I know what's best for me. You don't. Why didn't you answer my prayer? But God knows what's best. It comes down to trust and it comes down to faith. Has God spoken to your heart this morning? If you struggle different times, sometimes felt like shaking your fist at God, say, 
Why didn't you answer my prayer? I faithfully served you. I've been praying and I've been giving to you and I've been doing this and this and this and why didn't you give me this that I want right now? It's almost like we're saying to God, well, I have done this, therefore you are obligated to give me what I want in prayer. It doesn't work that way. God, out of love, responds to our requests in prayer, not out of demands from us that he do it. Amen? There's some churches that teach and give the implication that if we do this and this and this, God is obligated to give us that and that and that. Mm -mm. God is not obligated to give us anything, but out of love, he, he does answer our prayers. So God spoken to your heart this morning on prayer. If he has, this is an opportunity to come, and I will have a prayer. Let us pray. Lord, just uh, thank you for Gloria. Thank, thank you for Ruth. I pray that you will work in, in their life. I pray that you will raise them up as women of prayer. Deepen their faith and their trust in you. And for each one of us, that we may have a desire to develop our relationship with you, with you by being more of a praying people. We know the Apostle Paul says we're to pray without ceasing. We're to be in that attitude of prayer. We can be driving our car, not closing our eyes, but driving our car inwardly be praying. Lord, help us to know you more. Help us to have a desire to cultivate our relationship with you. Help us not to get discouraged when our prayers are not answered in the way that we want. Help us to know that you love us, and that you are concerned for us, and that you will continue to work in our lives as we depend on you and as we trust in you. We ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank God that His grace is sufficient for us, no matter what we go through. We are being prepared now for eternity. One day we shall be in heaven, no pain, no problems, no darkness. Nothing of what we face in this life. We thank God for what we have ahead for us. Jesus said he's, he's gone to prepare a mansion for us in heaven. Thank you, sir. But we're being prepared now for that time when we'll be with him. And now may his peace, which passes all understanding, continue to guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. May we go in his grace, in his love, and realizing his mercy for us and having saved us through his sending his son Jesus to die on the cross. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.